Our story unfolds in the Earth Dragon Kingdom's Linhai City, where countless monsters have entered the real world from other realms, and humanity is now faced with huge disasters. Thankfully, the heavens haven't abandoned humans. Markings have appeared on the backs of all humans' hands, and various special classes have awakened through those mysterious marks. Since then, mankind has entered an era of class shifters. Among the many awakened individuals, there are only three mythical classes. Lighthouse Kingdom, Ghost Swordsman, Alpha, Ephemeral Kingdom, Hell Dragon, Restavu, and Icebound Kingdom, Frost King, Quan Jixian. A hundred years ago, a talented class shifter appeared in the Dragon Kingdom. The strongest in the Dragon Kingdom, Xu Luo, became the first Adeptus of the 70th world in just 10 years. However, when the strongest level of the Nine Beasts invaded, he saved the Dragon Kingdom by defending the Rift alone, but he sacrificed himself. Today marks the 100th anniversary of Xu Luo's heroic death. A reporter reported that the memorial service held in the capital, Dragon City, the day before yesterday, was attended by the top-class shifters in the Dragon Kingdom. According to statistics, a total of 12.52 million people participated in the awakening of their kingdom this year. This is an increase of 11.3% compared to last year, setting the highest record in 110 years. Among these, core class shifters account for 10%, which has far exceeded the record in the year Xu Luo was born. Perhaps they can anticipate the birth of the next Xu Luo. While everyone was celebrating Xu Luo's 100th anniversary, in a dark room a man was shown lying on the bed. Suddenly, thunder struck and our main character, Xu Luo, opened his eyes hearing a system notification. The system repeated, The doors to an alternate world are about to open, class shifters. Please prepare. Hearing the system's voice, Xu Luo was shocked and got up immediately, asking, Didn't I die already? Where am I? But before he could understand anything, his head started to hurt like crazy. He saw memories of a body that belongs to Zhang Yue, who awakened as what is recognized as the most useless class in the world, Beast Tamer. It's not worth wasting time at all. If a poor person awakens as a beast tamer, he will die in an alternate world sooner or later, he thought. Also, Zhang Yue's little brother's medical bills had been delayed for two months, and if not paid, his brother would die. Zhang Yue could not bear all these problems alone. At his last moment, Zhang Yue said sorry to his younger brother, saying, I'm a useless older brother. I can't save you, and I can't save myself, and ate poison, and died. Seeing all those memories of Zhang Yue, Xu Luo realized what was happening. He never thought that he would reincarnate as a person with the exact same name as him a hundred years later. Seeing that Zhang Yue was a beast tamer, Xu Luo understood why he died like that. The beast tamer class mainly relies on their pets to fight. In addition to improving their own level, they can't overlook the attributes of their pets. It has been calculated that in order to cultivate a powerful beast tamer, one must have enough wealth to take over a kingdom. For ordinary people, it's definitely not good news to awaken as a beast Tamer. Xu Luo stood up and saw Zhang Yue's old photo. Looking at Zhang Yue's smiling face, Xu Luo picked up a raincoat and said, Zhang Yue, a good-for-nothing young man who failed in life and committed suicide. But I used to be Xu Luo, the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom. Zhang Yue, since I've taken over your body and awakened again, I will take up your responsibilities and regrets. Conquering this alternate world where the weak fight for food. He told Zhang Yue to think of it as his gratitude to him. Luo was ready, and a portal opened in front of him with a system notification saying, The doors to an alternate world are about to open. Class shifters, please prepare. Luo had already told the system to open up. With a bright light, a portal to a different world opened, and Luo entered. Upon entering, the system recognized him as Xiao Luo, not Zhang Yue. The notification said, Dear class shifter Xu Luo, greetings. The system has detected that you've been offline for 36,552 days. Offline idle reward income is 70 points per second, so Luo's total reward is 200 billion alternate energy points. Suddenly, a pouch appeared in front of Luo, and the system congratulated him on defeating the level 9 beast wave for the first time and completing the mythical achievement. It was an unparalleled achievement, and as a reward, he obtained a mythical level treasure, Supreme Oracle. When Luo got the Supreme Oracle, it automatically activated. Luo obtained a permanent buff. Now, alternate energy collection during online and offline status in an alternate world has increased 10,000 times, and this effect is now active. After it was activated, a huge amount of energy went into Luo's body. He obtained an additional 9999 times the idle income, totaling 2,000 trillion points of alternate energy. 
Luo was surprised to see billions of trillions of alternate energy. He couldn't believe that the most advanced beast wave in an alternate world, the reward for completing it for the first time, was so rich. Luo also obtained a class reset. The system asked him to please choose one of the seven mythical core classes. Knight class Undead Doom Rider. Warrior class Dark Swordsman. Assassin class Shadow Reaper. Priest class Holy Priest. Mage class Hellfire Mastery. Archer class Ghost Hunter and Beast Tamer class Necromancer. Seeing those seven mythical core classes, Luo said, A hundred years ago, I awakened as a top-tier warrior, but the strongest core class in that alternate world was actually a Beast Tamer. It's just that the amount of alternate energy required to improve oneself and the pets is too much, making development difficult. Luo reached out his hand and said, However, since I've reincarnated and have trillions of idle rewards, my first choice would of course be Necromancer. The system congratulated him on becoming the fourth mythical core class in the alternate world, Necromancer, which is an advanced beast tamer class. When Luo chose the Necromancer class, a huge amount of energy entered his body. Seeing 100 star initial growth, Luo said, This strength is noteworthy for being a mythical class. Necromancer is a magic type mythical core class. It's the messenger of resurrection from hell. The Necromancer specializes in the power of the dead. Only death can excite the Necromancer. Its magic attack growth is 25 stars, mana growth is 18 stars, health growth is 20 stars, physical defense growth is 18 stars, and magic defense growth is 19 stars. Necromancer has three main skills. First is Soul Harvest skill. When a Necromancer kills a monster in an alternate world, there's a 1% chance of harvesting the opponent's soul and making it a pet. The pet obtained in this way cannot be traded and can only be used by the harvester, or as upgrading materials for other pets to devour. Second is Undead Evolution. All pets of a necromancer can be evolved by devouring pets of the same level. The highest is the mythical level. Pets also have unlimited loyalty. Third is Death Reduction. The experience required to upgrade all pets of a necromancer is reduced by 50%. Seeing his own stats, Luo was amazed. The pet intelligence of ordinary beast tamers is obtained through mission rewards, and the quality cannot be improved. Unexpectedly, a necromancer can not only evolve pets, but also harvest monsters as their own pets. It is indeed a mythical class. He added that in his last life, he relied on his top-tier class to clear 70 worlds in the span of just 10 years and became number one in the Dragon Kingdom. But now, since he started this life with a mythical class, he must clear the levels perfectly until the final world. Not only will he become the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom, but he will be number one in the world. After entering the first alternate world called Nightmare Source, based on Luo's login location, the system matched him with a safe area called Doomsday Town. The system reminded Luo that fighting is prohibited in safe areas and asked him if he wanted to continue using the ID Shu Luo. Luo said he did not want to continue with Shu Luo and asked the system to set his new ID as Zero, choosing the name Zero because he believed that in this life, he was destined to surpass the existence of Shu Luo and the only thing that surpasses everything is zero. He was then teleported into the doomsday town of the first alternate world named Nightmare Source. Looking around, Luo asked, Is this an alternate world? It feels the same as the real world. So mystical. A guy standing beside Luo was confused and asked another guy, Wasn't it said that there are monsters everywhere in the alternate universe? Where are the monsters? The other guy explained to him that this is a safe zone and monsters are outside. While they were talking, a public notification announced that the first world quest had been issued and could be viewed on the mission interface. Seeing that the mission had begun, everyone started to prepare in advance, asking others if they wanted to team up. Nightmare Source is the first world where darkness covers the earth, and the monsters sleeping underneath revive. The world will eventually face disaster, and as a survivor, one must break the doomsday cycle, clear many disasters, and crush the darkness. The first world quest is to kill a total of 1,000 monsters in the first world. The second world quest is to collect 10 silver coins total by killing monsters or clearing quests in the first world. After completing the above world quests, players can activate the first world boss dungeon channel. They must defeat the boss, and then players can enter the second world. Seeing the information of the world, Luo realized that the regular layout of this alternate world hasn't changed much. He decided to first buy some equipment, and then do the quest. He went into the safe town's equipment store, whose owner is Charles. Charles asked Luo what he needed. Looking around, Luo saw that the system's equipment store is the same as before, only providing some basic unrefined products. The best equipment here is one star. Seeing that Luo was not interested in the weapons, 
Owner Charles told Luo that if he was not satisfied with these, he could also provide better quality equipment. However, it would cost some more copper coins. But Luo didn't need that. He gave a pouch of 100 copper coins to owner Charles and told him to give him a one-star staff. Everyone was shocked when Luo bought that one-star staff. A guy said to Luo, Dude, the newbie gift package only gave us 100 copper coins total. Did you spend them all? Another guy told Luo that a one-star staff can't give him much attack power. It's not as cost-effective to buy a one-star weapon as it is to get a complete set of unrefined products, he said. But Luo didn't care. He thanked them for the reminder and left from there. A girl asked other guys, doesn't only weapons with a higher star rating can refine their attributes? In this case, wouldn't the attack power be increased? A boy explained to the girl that refinement of equipment requires alternate energy, which can only be obtained in small amounts through killing monster spawns in quests. So such a precious thing can't be upgraded enough. If anyone uses it to refine a one-star staff, they might have a huge hole in their head, he said. All those guys laughed at Luo. One said, this kid spent all his money and has no defense at all. He will definitely suffer disaster later. I don't know where this country boy came from, but he has no knowledge at all. No matter if it's here or outside, it's difficult to make progress without money. Luo also knows that for the average new class shifter, it's really not cost effective to spend all their money on just one star equipment. The staff Luo got was a fire mage staff for beast tamer. It's a level zero refinable mediocre magic staff that can increase damage. The alternate energy an ordinary class shifter can obtain from slaying monsters is extremely limited, and it's impossible for them to be willing to refine one-star equipment. Luo smiled, saying, It's a shame that he is not lacking. He poured his alternate energy into refining the fire magic staff. The system warned Luo that this refinement consumes one point of alternate energy, and has a 10% chance of being upgraded to a green attribute. With higher attributes, the refining consumption increases, and the success rate decreases. Luo told the system to start refining. The first refinement was a success. After the first refining, the system asked him again if he wanted to refine further. Luo said yes, and the second attempt was also successful. Luo instructed the system to continue and not stop. All refinements were successful. And finally, Luo's equipment increased to the highest level. The system informed Luo that the number of one-click refinements was 132 times, with a total consumption of 985 alternate world energy. Luo obtained the golden attribute, Fire Herald Staff. He was surprised that his staff was refined 132 times at once, showcasing the potential of hundreds of billions of alternate energy. The staff, transformed into the Fire Herald Staff, was born from flames. All enemies will be burned to ashes. Its magic attack power increased to 26, and it gained an additional attribute of intelligence. Now, the staff has a burning skill. Each time the user attacks, the enemy enters a burning state that lasts for 3 seconds losing 20 health points per second. Seeing his staff's information, Luo laughed, saying, Preparation for battle is complete. Now, let the show begin. Currently, Luo is a level 0 necromancer shift, a mythical core class with the name ID 0. His experience for leveling up is also 0. His stats are as follows. 56 magic attack, 18 physical defense, 19 magic defense, 200 health, and 180 mana. His intelligence is 12 which affects his magic attack. His agility is 10, affecting speed and critical damage. His spirit is 10, influencing mana. His stamina is also 10, affecting defense, and his constitution is 10, impacting health. Luo doesn't have any money, but possesses 2,000 trillion units of alternate energy. As a newbie who is as powerful as everyone else, he needs to work extra hard to survive in this alternate world. Luo then steps outside the safe town to hunt monsters. Outside, the nightmare for new class shifters has begun. Some people were fighting against a giant mutant rat. A warrior struck the rat with his sword, dealing only two points of health damage. His attack barely scratched the rat. Shocked, the warrior exclaimed, Is this a low-level beast? It has so much health, I can barely deal any damage. Then, as the rat attacked, the warrior dodged immediately, knowing that if class shifters get hit, they could die. During the fight, suddenly a fireball came from behind and hit the giant rat dealing 55 health damage in one strike. The warrior and his team were surprised and looked back to see who had cast the fireball. It was Luo, using his Fire Herald staff, whose burning effect had triggered the attack. With that single fireball, Luo killed the giant rat, earning two experience points and 10,000 alternate energy. He also obtained a bonus buff of 10,000 times the alternate energy. Mythical class shifters have buffs full of basic attributes, including max level equipment. Those with ordinary classes need to form a team to kill even a giant mutant rat, 
but Luo can now take them down one by one. The warrior was shocked to see Luo defeat the giant rat so effortlessly. What kind of insane damage is that? A girl from the warrior's team noticed Luo's golden equipment and wondered if he could be an experienced class shifter. However, the warrior dismissed it saying, who would have that much alternate energy to refine a beginner's staff in the early stages? Curious about Luo, but understanding that he is a force to be reckoned with, they decided not to provoke him. Noting that level 1 beasts give too little experience, Luo decided to target only higher level beasts. He knew that in this first alternate world, Nightmare Source, besides the giant mutant rats, there were also level 3 to 4 poisonous spiders, level 5 to 7 armored scorpions, level 8 to 9 wild boars, and the ultimate boss of the first world, the level 10 violent boar king. Luo decided that the beasts above level 3 in the abandoned factory were his best choice and turned to leave. However, the warrior and his teammates stopped him. The warrior asked Luo about forming a team, saying they had a healer, a shielder, and a damage dealer. One girl flaunted her appeal saying, Cutie, can you take us with you? Another girl also tried to persuade him, telling Luo she was a priest and could heal him. They didn't want to let Luo go, knowing they could easily clear the first world if they were with him. With a cold expression, Luo told them he didn't need them and asked them to move out of his way. Without saying anything, the warrior and his teammates moved aside, and Luo left. The warrior, still frightened, asked his teammates if they felt Luo's aura, noting that it was even scarier than the beasts. They noticed that Luo had headed toward the abandoned factory, rumored to be filled with high-level and dangerous beasts. They wondered if Luo was planning to fight alone, commenting, as expected of a big boss, they don't follow the usual route. Inside the abandoned factory, Luo was immediately attacked by level 1 giant mutant rats and level 3 poisonous spiders. Using a thunder spell, Luo took them all down in one second. For killing each giant mutant rat, Luo earned 2 experience points and 10,000 alternate energy, and for each level 3 poisonous spider, he got 8 experience points and 30,000 alternate energy. After gaining 100 points, Luo leveled up, increasing his health by 30 and mana by 12, and he also gained 6 free attribute points. His current level is now 2, and the next upgrade requires 250 experience points. While Luo was reviewing his status window, a poisonous spider attacked him. Luo immediately used his staff to cast a thunder spell, and with a massive explosion, the spider's body exploded. After that, Luo continued killing those poisonous spiders one by one, until he leveled up again, and became level 3. Now, the next level upgrade requires 1000 experience points. Luo also unlocked the first skill bar, and obtained the initial skill, Fireball. Luo was surprised looking at his status window. He never thought that even the upgrade bonus for the mythical class would be six times higher than that of ordinary classes. After leveling up three consecutive times, he now has 18 attribute points to use freely. Knowing that the Beast Tamer class has the same growth path as that of a mage, Luo ensured faster spellcasting and stable damage, and then leveled up his agility. He allocated eight points to his intelligence, five to his agility, and five to his spirit. As for the initial skill, which isn't very powerful, Luo looked at it and thought that for those of ordinary classes with limited alternate energy, they generally wouldn't waste anything here. Unfortunately, what Luo lacks most in this world isn't alternate energy, so he decided to level this skill to the max. The fireball spell is upgradable. He can cast it 10 times, using 3 mana points, and it has a 3 second cooldown. The system told Luo that to use fireball, he must gather mana, and release a fireball that causes magic damage equal to 110% of his magic attack power to a single enemy. A critical hit will cause the enemy to enter a burning state that lasts for 3 seconds, losing 5% of blood caused by the attack every second. Luo decided to upgrade the fireball spell. For the first upgrade, it consumed 10 points of alternate energy, and the fireball upgraded to D rank with its damage increased to 112%. The second upgrade cost 500 points of alternate energy, and increase the damage to 114%. The third upgrade consumed 3,000 points of alternate energy, upgrading the fireball to a medium fireball of C rank, increasing the damage to 140%, and the burning damage per second of the special effect was increased to 8%. The fourth upgrade cost 30,000 points of alternate energy, and the fireball upgraded to super fireball, becoming a grade A spell. It has reached the highest skill quality of Luo's current class level. The system told Luo to continue upgrading after his second class awakening. Luo was happy to see the results, saying, Not bad, the damage of an initial skill at max level can reach 140%. Luo looked at the mission window and said, Based on this progress, if he completes the first two world quests, he can reach level 8 no matter what. 
When the time comes, it'll be enough for him to just challenge the ultimate boss and complete the first world. While he was busy looking at his status, he heard a noise. When he looked to his side, there was a huge door. And from behind that door, someone called for help. Luo opened the door and saw an injured guy named Carl asking for help. Looking at Carl, Luo thought that except for the fact that players actually die after being killed, this world isn't that different from an ordinary game. Missions, dungeons, and the NPC in front of him showed that it's almost similar to a game. NPC Carl told Luo that his wife and children were killed by monsters and asked Luo if he could help him kill those cruel scorpions. When Carl asked for help, a system notification appeared saying, a plot has been triggered. The system asked Luo if he wanted to accept the quest to destroy the scorpions. Luo knows that most equipment obtained from NPC missions is better than those from killing monsters. It just so happens that Luo only has a staff in hand, so this mission is worth doing. When Luo accepted the mission, the quest details showed up. The difficulty is 10. The quest is to kill all the armored scorpions and their leader, the armored emperor scorpion in the Doomsday Factory. The quest reward is 500 experience, 1 silver coin, 300 alternate energy, and a random 1-star equipment. Suddenly, Luo felt something was up ahead. He looked ahead, but it appeared empty. There was nothing. However, Luo realized what it was. He smiled and said, It seems like monsters aren't the only things here. Completing the quest is my top priority right now. While Luo prepared to fight, from a corner, some eyes were watching all his movements. Luo became alert and saw many intermediate monsters of the first world, the Armored Scorpions. The Armored Scorpion is a level 5 physical type normal monster. It has 290 health, 40 physical attack, 28 physical defense, and 25 magic defense. These scorpions have mutated due to environmental pollution and possess hard armor covering their bodies that can withstand a lot of damage. When the armored scorpions saw Luo, they activated their armor skill, which reduced the effect of Luo's attacks. After reducing Luo's attack power, an armored scorpion lunged to attack him. Luo was ready for this. He summoned his staff and prepared to fight back. 